In the weather today, it's warm in Texas, the wind is roaring outside. That's a common sound in spring on the Great Plains. That moisture is on its way north. First, let's take a look at the hot spot around the world. That's going to be Paraburdu in the northwestern mining districts, 116 degrees. A little oasis in the desert there. At the other extreme, Oymyakon in eastern Siberia, minus 65. And with the northern hemisphere starting to warm up, we're going to see Antarctica take most of the cold records, but I'm going to push those down to the bottom so we can see some of the more interesting areas in our part of the world. And just for fun, can anybody guess where this might be? Yeah, I'll pan around. It was kind of surprising when I saw this, and I think you'll be surprised too. We're going to talk about it on Friday. So post in the comments where you think this is located. Here is the weather map this afternoon. We've got a deep weather system there in northwestern Oklahoma, 1002 millibar low, but it is a fairly dry system. The satellite imagery mostly showing cirrus and some alt cumulus associated with this mountain wave activity in Colorado. We currently have a Pacific cold front moving through West Texas, further north a warm front in northeastern Kansas, and then just kind of a weak frontal system up into the Great Lakes. We do see thermal troughing through the western U.S., the thickness gradient located across the southwestern states supporting that jet stream activity in the southern part of the country. And we should also take note of the thermal ridging right there. That's associated with the warm advection as that warmth and moisture flows northward from the Gulf. If we go up to 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet, we can pick up the start of a low-level jet. 40 knot flow, but it is highly veered. So no wonder we don't have much moisture in place at this time. The flow coming pretty much right off the Mexican plateau region. Going into tonight and tomorrow morning, not much change, even more veered. 45 knot flow going into Arkansas and Louisiana. So that will scour out what moisture we do have in the south central U.S. And you can see a cold front working south. We've got both a thermal gradient and northerly flow in Kansas and northern Oklahoma. In the northeastern U.S., continued fair skies. However, we do have increasing moisture out in the Midwest and a marginal risk from SPC for severe storms in central Illinois around Champaign and Peoria for later tonight. That's in a region of warm air advection, and we could see precipitable water increasing to about one inch as we go into later tonight. I know it's kind of hard to believe, but that's how it looks at noon, about 0.7 inch up the Mississippi River and just increasing as we go through the night, almost one inch around midnight and by 6 a.m. exceeding one inch in southern Illinois. In the southeastern region, clear from the Carolinas down to northern Florida, but a strong jet is in place 150 knots flowing from Arkansas to South Carolina. These southerly winds have become a problem for wildfires in southwestern Louisiana, right in there. You can see that plume coming out of the North Island area. This is rather sparsely populated, and those smoke plumes spreading northward just west of Lafayette. The south central U.S. looking pretty good. There's some of that subtropical cirrus spreading out of northwestern Mexico, but down along the coast, the remnants of some stratus. Let's take a look at the NT microphysics. So this goes back to about 1030 last night. There's Victoria and Hallettsville. And if we run this forward, you can see that stratus really take hold. Now we're up to about 5 in the morning daybreak and quite a bit of stratus surging all the way north into Dallas, the hill country, 
and up into northwestern Louisiana. And this shows you the precipitable water last night, about half an inch, but very stout southerly flow, bringing that moisture north, and just more on the way for tonight. And of course we have the wind gusting up to about 25 knots in most areas, high wind warnings in the mountains, but we've also got warm temperatures. You can see 87 there at Breckenridge, 85 at Wichita Falls, and 88 at San Angelo. We may just top out around 90 degrees around Breckenridge and Throckmorton, and we're definitely going up into the 90s around Fort Stockton. As we head further north, that wind continues all the way up towards Colorado Springs and Pueblo, but we catch up with a front, cooler temperatures, 60s, and some northerly flow there. And that's going to be that frontal boundary right through here. And as we mentioned, it is a dry front, so not much in the way of clouds in Kansas. And as we go further north, just more mid and high cloud. This is associated mostly with upper dynamics. In the southwestern U.S., we do have a cold air advection pattern underway. You can see that in that extensive cumuliform cloud field. That's suggestive of modification of a cold air mass flowing into that region. And the leading edge of that... Yeah, it's in West Texas. I mean, you don't really see a cold front obvious through here, but if you do the imaginary car drive technique, going from Oklahoma City, 82 degrees, southwest wind, you drive out to Amarillo, 82, then you hit Tucumcari, it cools off to 75, down to 73 at Santa Rosa, down to 63 at Albuquerque, and it keeps going down all the way to the Continental Divide. So somewhere in here is the front. And of course, we put that on the warm side of the gradient, which means we probably transition into it around Vega, Texas. And then we just kind of extend that south. I'm not sure what side of Roswell it's on or El Paso. I think maybe it's just about up on them, kind of like that. So I'm going to go with that for the frontal location. And as you go north, you can see the cooler air. So not... It doesn't really jump out right at you. It's a very subtle feature that's very common in this strong westerly type of weather pattern. But if we go back to midday, yes, there is a definite thickness gradient all through New Mexico. So that definitely supports that frontal boundary right through there. So that kind of tells us that the system is mostly driven by upper and mid-level dynamics and just not really a whole lot of cold air right at the surface. Here's the 850 millibar chart at about 5,000 feet. There is a lot of terrain intersection, so we get just very limited use out of this chart. But there is a thermal gradient between El Paso and Phoenix from 20 Celsius down to 6 Celsius. So that supports the front right through here. There's 700 millibars. Yep, support for a front eastern New Mexico down to the El Paso area, and there's the cooling as you go west. And at 500 millibars, 18,000 feet, yes, plenty of cold air in the Four Corners area, northern Arizona and Nevada, and that supports steep lapse rates and the development of shower activity, so that correlates closely with the 500 millibar cold temperatures. And we've got improving conditions offshore. However, in California itself, you can see the effects of those steep lapse rates. Plenty of cold air in the mid and upper levels. And in the northwestern U.S., about the only thing we got going on is more cold air in the mid and upper levels and a closed low right there, just northwest of Portland. There's a better look at it on the surface chart. It does have a reflection at the surface, but it looks more like an occlusion. There's a look at our Pacific chart. This looks a lot more like a cutoff low. We can see in the bear clinic zones, like right in here, not really any development at this time. And further north up near the Aleutians, this is a very powerful weather system, but most of the momentum heading into Alaska and Yukon. Checking out Alaska and Canada, 
a winter storm warning for the lower Yukon River Valley, up to two inches there. We do have blizzard warnings on the north slope. And with that southerly flow continuing, we've got wind warnings in effect for the northern Alaska range slopes and foothills. Could be up to 60 miles an hour winds at Fort Greeley. Not much going on in Canada, although there is some cold air sinking south through James Bay, Ontario, and into parts of Northwest Territories. We do have a continuation of extreme cold warnings in the central and southern Nunavut communities and in northern Quebec. Also a snowfall warning posted for eastern Great Slave Lake, expecting about 4 to 6 inches today. And a look at the Atlantic in case you're piloting a container ship to England or something like that. We do have a series of powerful weather systems moving through the British Isles, opening up that strong westerly flow. Several days ago, we did have that massive surge of cold air into the Labrador Sea, and this is the end result of that cold air spilling southeast and east. So considerable cold advection heading into Western Europe. And for tonight, we do have a warm conveyor belt feeding moisture up into France, Germany, and Denmark. So very rainy weather pattern there, but a big change is on the way, of course. And before we head into the forecast, let's take a look at that upper air pattern. This is 500 millibars and we see a split flow. One branch across the southern states, another one very far north up there in the Northwest Territories, Alaska, and over to Ontario and Quebec. And that's supporting this Hudson Bay low. As we go into this weekend, a chunk of that low does break off and move into Quebec and grazes part of the northeastern U.S. Almost a little vortex right there. So it is going to be pretty cold and maybe a little bit stormy, maybe a chance of winter weather in that part of the U.S. However, for the rest of us, west-northwest flow and the southern branch continuing across Texas. We've got this cutoff flow off of California spinning around out there. And finally, by Tuesday, it gets picked up and surges eastward, moving about 60 miles an hour across the Rockies and moving into Oklahoma by Thursday. Now, we do have a chance of severe weather coming up for maybe Wednesday, Thursday. The GFS appears to have backed off a little bit from this. However, if we look at the ECMWF for next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, bring in some high capes up to the Midwest. So that spells the potential for storm activity. So we'll just have to monitor the models and check back in on this on Friday and see what transpires. So let's take a look at that forecast now that we're fully grounded in all of that data. Cold air advection to West Texas, that's the big story. Warm advection into the Missouri, Kansas, Ozarks region. And going into tonight, cold front continues plodding eastward into Arkansas by midday tomorrow. One wave develops up there in Indiana and Ohio. Precip developing all the way down towards Kentucky and Tennessee. Cold advection working south now. So we've got a combination of both Canadian air and Pacific air flowing into the back of this system. And you can see another outbreak starting up up there in Ontario. We talked, well, I guess our supporters remember back on Monday. In fact, I'll just show you that. We were showing this to the supporters back on Monday. This is all the cold air Monday evening up there in the North Canadian region. That's minus 30 to minus 40 degree temperatures. Bitterly cold air. And of course, that is being picked up and carried south because it is west of the Hudson Bay vortex. Well, here's what we have today. Yeah, the orange air mass, the bitterly cold air is on the move. A lot of it sweeping east towards Labrador, but of course some of it will eventually make its way south. So the cold air beginning to slip south on Thursday. Then going into midday on Friday when we do our weather cast, a large amount of cold air coming through the Great Lakes into all of Ontario and into Quebec. We do have this modified downslope flow, kind of a Pacific origin, so a little bit 
more mild as you go further south into Oklahoma and Arkansas. Through the weekend, that cold air continues coming south. You can see some of that wintry weather up there in Maine, and that's going to be the thermal troughing. Elsewhere, we see a warming trend, especially out west. Parts of the San Joaquin Valley expected to see 70s. Then we have another outbreak of cold air coming south for Sunday. This is a little bit further to the west, coming into the Dakotas and Minnesota. And you can see things get quite stormy going into Monday up there in the northwestern U.S. Heat wave in Texas, 90s showing up around parts of Fort Worth, not in Fort Worth itself, but near there, and just outside San Antonio as well. So you're going to have to dust off those air conditioners and one-inch precipitable water coming up north, especially into Louisiana. Then for Tuesday, getting more and more dynamic. Moisture strengthens 1.25-inch precipitable water from South Texas into Louisiana. And heat spreads up into the Midwest, looking at a high of 67 in Chicago, 62 at Detroit, and 70s in western Illinois. And some big differences showing up around Wednesday in the models. This is the European model going for vast amounts of warm air advection, not as much cold advection into the central plains. And you can see that as we get into around uh, later on Wednesday, storms all the way from Rockford down to the Quad Cities and northern Missouri. The GFS not quite going for as much of that. Those are going to be rapidly undercut by this northerly flow, so maybe less in the way of severe weather. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, this cold air will sweep through the rest of the country going into late next week, and then things get active out there in the Pacific. Looks like another atmospheric river event inbound for California. And that will be all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Here's some footage taken on Sunday evening in the Texas Hill Country, so enjoy that. As a reminder, please support the program by picking up a book at weathergraphics.com or becoming a Patreon supporter. And that's about all I have to say about that. Okay, so we'll see you back here on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening. Take care. Bye-bye.